Oh, there you are, YouTube. Doo 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 doo. Subscribe if you're interested, but also no pressure. Hey, I thought we might do a random ranking today. What do you say we go to my movie collection behind me and pick out three movies at random, and then rank those movies based on whatever criteria we come up with? It could be, you know, based on the director. It could be some of the actors. It could be the story. It could be the special effects. It could be the box art. It could be the mood I'm in right now. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but, <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll, I'll rank them in the, in the video, but if you'd like to rank them in the comments below, please feel free to do so, and then I'll dive into that comment section, and we can start talking about movies. I'll be a little late to the game. I've been a little late to the comments lately. Many apologies for that, but I'll, I'll try and, I'll try and catch up maybe in a, uh, tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, let's go pick up three films maybe something from this area over here and then maybe whatever this movie is and then i don't know what do you think maybe something down here Ooh, ooh, what is that seen it seen it ah blast every time i pull this one out and people uh, actually, I say every time, but I think I've only pulled this one once. But Southpaw, I've been, I, I've been told though I need to see it. I, I hear it's great. I hear it's great, and oddly, like boxing movies, just you know, who who watches boxing? But not very many people, at least no, nobody that I know. But if, how many people watch boxing movies? Everybody. Okay. Oh, this is fun. Wait till you get a load of this. Beetlejuice. Um, no. Well, Beetlejuice? <laughs> no. Batman. What do they, wait, do they get a load of me? Um, but I had, it was, uh, it was, you know, both, both Tim Burton. So I think that's what was going on in my brain. Also both Michael Keaton. Also Beetlejuice is coming out pretty soon. Wait a second. Where's my Beetlejuice painting? I should pull that up. Maybe I'll do that when I see the movie. Um, anyway, so here are the films. First off, we have, well, Apollo 13, directed by Ron Howard. This movie is amazing. This movie is fantastic. It's great. It's gripping, even though, like, it's highly rewatchable somehow, even though we know how it's going to go. We know the astronauts are going to be safe. Uh, we know they're going to make it home. But I was popping in this VHS over and over and over as a kid to the point to where this popped into my top five favorite films of all time. Sometimes I think about swapping it with six. Six is Ghostbusters and sometimes I want to put Ghostbusters at number five and then drop this one down to six though. Mostly because I don't watch it as much as I watch Ghostbusters but back in the VHS days uh, when that's all I had, um, just, I was, I was watching it all the time. Like, I, 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 I love this movie. Um, so, Houston, we have a problem. Plus, Tom Hanks is one of my favorite actors. I have a signed, uh, uh, portrait of, from the movie, like a still from the movie, signed by Tom Hanks over there. My wife got that for me, uh, from, uh, signed, uh, photograph of Tom Hanks from this movie, right? I mean, he signed it, you know, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. But, um, yeah, I got a lot of Tom Hanks stuff over there. I got Tom Hanks from the Terminal over there. Life-size, full-size cutout. Uh, but, yeah, Tom Hanks is my favorite actor, and this is one of the movies that put it on top for me, along with Splash and Big and um, uh, You've Got Mail and Joe vs. the Volcano and, um, gosh, I mean, a little... A League of Their Own, which I think came out on 4K, and I need to pick that up. I don't even own that movie on any format. I gotta pick that one up. Uh, but yeah, Apollo 13, love it, heart it. Um, and Ron Howard was great. I mean, and also just like that that moment at the end when we're sort of cross cutting back and forth between because uh, we, we we there's they're 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 working on re-entry, and we're like, are they going to make it? Are our, our, our heroes 
American heroes going to make it? Are they going to survive? And we're waiting for re-entry to see if they make it back to Earth. And we're, we're sort of cross-cutting back and forth between um, Houston, the control room, and then um, the, the wives, and then uh, also Colt from... Um, um, uh, from um, Three Ninjas, who plays his son, who plays uh, Jim Lovell's son. And, you know, we're cross-cutting back and forth, and then we, um, how, how does that go? We, we start to, oh, oh, yeah, and then we see the re-entry ship, right? We see it in the sky, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean they're alive. So it's still kind of tense, still kind of tense. But then we hear Tom Hanks, Jim Lovell's, name or uh, uh, voice over the intercom which tells us that they are safe so even when we see that little dot in the sky we're not we're still not sure sure we see that lodge that little capsule there but are the people inside alive and then when we hear tom hanks's voice we know they are and then the music erupts uh houston erupts um uh, Steen Burgeon, that's not her name, is it? Let me make sure I get that right, because I don't, I don't think that is. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actress. That's not Mary Steen Burgeon, though. What's her name? Um, gosh, it's not on here. You know, she's, she's all, you know, everybody's, everybody's happy. It's such a great moment. I just love how just seeing the little dot doesn't necessarily mean everything's okay. But when we hear Tom's voice, everything's okay. Love this movie. Uh, great score. Next we have In the Bedroom. Uh, this is good. This is like um, a sort of, well, you know, um, uh, gosh, I'm having trouble thinking of his name right now. Wilkinson, right? Is it Tom Wilkinson? Yes. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's, he gets himself into a situation here. Um, but like just great acting all around. We've got a lot of, a lot of great people in it. We have Sissy Spacek, uh, Tom Wilkinson, Marissa Tomei. I've never been a big, uh, Stahl fan. He's not in this movie too much though. Um, I don't know. I, I shouldn't say that. I don't know. It's just certain things. I, I'm not the biggest fan of him in, like, Terminator 3. I just, I think he was miscast. That's basically my issue. But great movie here. Um, next we have, who did I say was my favorite actor of all time? Tom Hanks. Whoopish. Dragnet. This is one of the first films I saw him in. I mean, it was probably this one and Splash and Big. Uh, Joe vs. the Volcano. Actually, no. Joe, Joe, Joe was a little bit later because that was in 90. So, you know, I, I would first got acquainted with um, uh, Tom Hanks in the 80s. So I would say pro <clears throat> probably Splash was the first film I saw of his. Or it could have been big. Gosh, I don't know. But I always love this because, um, you know, he does a lot of dramas today. But he was, he was great at comedy. He had the chops for comedy. And this movie here, he's very funny. He really doesn't have a lot to do other than bounce uh, jokes off of Dan Aykroyd here. And this is kind of a sequel to the show Dragnet. Um, but he's really funny in it. And I, I always liked when he was acting like Freddy Krueger in it or getting it. He was like replaying a, a scene and acting a scene of getting attacked by Freddy Krueger. And I always loved that. Um, I like how we meet him and then how he transforms into the person in the suit. And it's kind of funny because how often do you think of Tom Hanks as like um, uh, um, like sexualized, like sexual, right? But in this movie, he's like a horn dog. He's like a horny dude making sex jokes and things like that. And it's just kind of funny. It's almost like he's playing John Candy's role in um, in Splash in a way, kind of, you know, just that, you know, horny quality, which is kind of funny. I want to see Splash on Disney Plus and see how they handle that. Uh, how they handled John Candy's character because I know they did the whole thing with the extending of Daryl Hannah's hair But anyway, how are we gonna rank these? I think it's obvious and this is actually kind of difficult because uh, I've been rewatching Dragnet every every once in a while and I think I have three different versions of this film 
on a disc. I have a snapper, a regular, and this. Uh, this is the uh, Shout Factory, by the way. Bum, ba dun, dun. So this is awesome. I had a chance, I was in Metropolis, Illinois for a Superman celebration uh, that they have. And there's this museum that they have called the Hollywood Museum and they sell all these like vintage posters. And I had the chance to buy a vintage Dragnet poster, but I didn't get it because of the car that I was in. Me and my buddies, we all drove down there many hours to get there. And it was like a little tiny sports car. And I was like, there's no way I could fit this in, in the car, you know, with all the friends and stuff. So I didn't get it and I've always regretted it. I always regret not getting that. But yeah, the way we're gonna rank these here um, is Apollo 13 and then Dragnet and then in the bedroom. But my question to you is, uh, well, I don't know. Look, yeah, I, I mean, I'm certain with this, so I, I don't even need to second guess this. One more time, Apollo 13, Dragnet, and In the Bedroom. Very, very clear that the Tom Hanks films would be number one and two here. But yeah, my question to you is, have you seen these films, these three right here? And if so, what do you think of them? And if you've seen all three, how would you rank them? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below, and perhaps we'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout.